Hi viewers and welcome back to Sahara TV. Yesterday, Ghana's president, John Dramani Mahama, fired his deputy minister of communication, Vicky Lakshmi Hama. Now, hiring and firing is part of every president's duties and should not necessarily make the headlines, but this particular case comes with a cargo of issues. A statement issued by issued and signed by the Information and Media Relations Minister, Maham Ayariga, said simply, His Excellency the President has relieved Ms. Victoria Hama of her post as Deputy Minister without any specifics. It is, however, believed that Ms. Hama's dismissal was as a result of a leak tape in which she is purported to have made some indicting statements. In the aftermath, to the issue, Ms. Hammer's driver, Mr. Lawrence Quason, who is suspected to have recorded the tape, was arrested by the police but has since been released without any charges. Ms. Hammer's dismissal comes in the wake of increasing calls on President Mahama to check corruption in his government. She has so far not made any comments on the issue, but joining us right now from Accra, Ghana, to look at the scandal is her spokesperson, Mr. Lord Hammer. Um, and also joining us to look at uh, the fallouts of the matter and other legal implications are Stephen Enti, senior broadcast journalist with a reputed multimedia group, and also Samson Ladi Ayenene, also a senior broadcast journalist with multimedia and a managing partner at the legal firm Zwenis, Hughes & Co. Welcome to Sarah TV, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Okay, so let, thank you. Let me start with you, Lord. Um, can you bring us up to speed with what, what, what the whole ruckus is about? Can you briefly tell us, you know, what this is all about? I, I think that the whole discussion has suffered uh, from an acute consideration and a lack of deeper and broader, broader, broader analysis. As a fan member, as, as a brother to the Hammer and the activists in the ruling party. I see that what happened to her is first and foremost a security question. Mm -hmm. What we know is this. We have seen a, a, an intensive and unprecedented intrusion in the public life. The tape in question covers recordings on activities for the past four months and it raises very large questions for government security and the result is that a dismissal actually has been was the cause of the corporate media attack on her and the what's that analysis and to me is that's nothing the more than a reward for the encroachment of privacy um i hear you on that mr hammer but uh before before we move on though, can we please turn down the, our volume slightly? I think there's a there's a feedback uh, coming from one of you. Uh, would if if you can kindly turn down your your volumes, I'll, that would be really good. Um, the, my technicians tell me it's probably coming from you, Stephen. If if you can kindly turn down the volume. Uh, tiny little bit, that would be really good for us. Thank you. But Mr. H Mr. Hammer, you, you mentioned that the media seems to be on a, on a witch hunt for Miss um, Hammer. Why is this? Why is that? Why would anybody, you know, set off on a um, witch hunt of, of anyone? Uh, these are my personal comments, and uh, let me correct you. I'm not the first man for Mr. Hammer. I made my comments as a brother. Family. Oh, you are you are yeah. you are actually the brother of Miss Hammer. Hammer yes. Well, but in this I context, in this context, you're speaking for her, so I, that's only to describe, you know. But yeah. Oh, that's, if you that, can that's, that's okay. Speak I to don't, the I don't, issue. I'm not sure that's it. But what I'm saying, I'm not speaking about Mr. Hammer. I speak on an issue. Mm. What I'm saying is that our family also we are concerned about a security change with the minister, and that this issue is also important. Secondly, to concerning the authenticity of the tape. What was inside the restaurant? We came to root shop to come in, in, in terms of whether it was a voice, only a voice, what content, had been, what, what content how reliable it is, and the extent of this ability. The swiftness of the action of government and the swift and kind of 
um, what do you call it? Uh, history, uh, it's history comments being made and uh, conclusions. Well, uh, well, um, sorry, yeah. to, sorry to butt in, Lord, but government did not give any specific reason for for firing your sister. So at this point, we we are free to assume that it could be for any other reason. Is that is that not right? Well, I, from my point of view, and uh, what I know, it is linked to the uh, alleged tape recording. You, 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 are her, you are her brother. Can you tell us for real if it was or it was not her voice? Uh, me and brother, that doesn't make you a voice expert. My opinion over the issue was that, um, is that a question about me and voice on her voice? We believe that we are still come up to terms with the fact that our investigations have shown that the, the tape itself was compromised and it wasn't a single. 32 minutes discussion has been said there. Mm. We see recordings that were intended for a simple purpose. The issue is that the public needs to be more informed of the matter to make a more informed comment or opinions on our whole matter. We border on the on the person's credibility and life. So I, these are all issues that we're looking at. Well, I think that there has been a hasty um, and acute focus on certain parts of the content that actually as time goes on, we can be able to that, uh, able to um, prove that it, is, it was more more conducted or something. Okay, well. And then uh, with the period, period in time on Thursday morning, but it's not the one thing. This is the sixth executive in terms of appointment in our in our history of our governance. Uh, tape comes comes on radio Thursday Thursday evening, seven o'clock thirty before working hours. The decision I'm taking. I think that uh, it didn't allow anybody uh, the kind of space to make any reflection. Well, and, again, uh, again, yeah, I we, need are, to... we are, we are, we are I understand that uh, beyond all everything, no governance institution in the world, in Ghana, in the U.S., can survive for a second with this level of tuition and any kind of reward for a breach of privacy. I, I do, I do, I, I do get your point, Mr. Yeah. Hammer, but I still need to. Um, bring us all on the same page concerning the reason why your sister was fired. It's still not been uh, expressly stated by government that she was fired as a result of that tape. But let's, let's return to the matter of the tape. You said it's been doctored, and I have the tendency to believe that it was actually doctored because it seemed to be just your sister talking all the, I mean, the whole time. Who was she speaking with, you know? I, uh, this matter, I believe that uh, the machinery of the state has the strength and the resources and the power to come to investigate and uh, come out with something that you certain scare. As we are here, we are all in the need of situation. We don't want to come to terms with the whole matter. So the time to roll from Thursday, we are Friday, Saturday, um, which, and no space at all to have time to come to terms with situation. But I can't disclose much of what we have done. But we have done a lot to find that there was a true and real security breach on her over the over a period of semester. And that reflects a lot concerning the inner power struggles within the National Democratic Congress. Okay, that, you're raising very interesting issues, and um, I'll, I'll come back to you. But let me go to Ms. Um, Stephen for now. But before I do that, actually, can I ask you, is it true that you're related to the driver, to Ms. Hammer's driver? The driver is our director. Direct cousin. Direct cousin, yes. Okay. He's the nephew of my father. Okay, all right. Thank right you. I'll, I'll yeah. come back to you. Uh, Stephen, at, at this point, we're not totally sure of the details and all of that, but le le let me ask you. Generally speaking, people seem to be raising questions in the, in the very recent past about um, perceived corruption in President Mohammed's government. How bad is it? How, how are Ghanaians really seeing this government in terms of corruption? Well, I mean, I'm wondering whether I am the right person to answer it from the kind of uh, slant that you're giving it. I mean, perception of corruption from the indications that have been given by the uh, Ghana Integrity Initiative, 
is that uh, lots of Ghanaians feel that uh, government institutions and state uh, agencies are corrupt. The police service was named, uh, state institutions like ministries and agencies were also cited. So, I mean, corruption is a perceived thing in a society, and from my my perspective as a journalist and working in the media, uh, corruption is, is real. It's not just a perception. So the question is, I, I'm not very sure whether uh, the deputy minister, in her reference on the set tape, expressing an ambition of uh, making $1 million before quitting politics, could be directly tied to any uh, substantial corrupt practice or mm. act. I mean, I I don't know. I don't see how anybody expressing an ambition could be pinned down to say she's uh, involved or perhaps has ambitions for corruption. Nobody, uh, she didn't say on the tape expressly what, how. She how she would do that. That's a very, that that's a very valid point. So, so... I mean, the whole thing about corruption and fighting corruption is, is, is beyond just this tape. I think that it's very unfair if she was dismissed on the basis of uh, corruption, for example, because that, the NDC government and the current government has had several issues involving Jida and Suba, all of which are, are corrupt issues, which must be investigated, and the president has set up committees to investigate these. So far... Nobody has been asked to proceed on leave or sit back while these investigations continue. So I, I'm not particularly uh, very keen on, on, on saying that her dismissal was related to anything corrupt. That, that's, that's, that's a very valid point, Stephen. Yeah. But, but I'm happy that you, you actually mentioned this because it doesn't seem to be just about her trying to make a million dollars. She also said other things. She's purported, alleged, to have said other things which impunge on the, on the integrity of the president and not just that, but also the Supreme Court and the Electoral Commission. She's alleged to have said something like the, the, the Nana Oyelita, who is uh, the Minister for um, Gender Affairs and whose husband was President Mohammed's lead counsel, conferred with the Supreme Court judges before the verdict was given and they just ended uh, uh, Supreme Court verdict. That definitely is damning, isn't it? It is. I mean, it is. But if you listened very carefully to the tape, which I listened to, her reference to Nana Elita and the Supreme Court were all like gossips that she also heard that Nana Elita was with the justices on the night that the judgment was delivered and things like that. So for me, I feel that the first thing that the state machinery should do in order to put our minds at rest and uh, Ms. Hammer's mind at rest and, and her family's mind at rest is to come out clearly with any investigations that have been conducted in, into the, the tape allegation, really. I feel like her brother said that dismissing the person just one day, less than 24 hours after the alleged tape was, was released to the media is... is it's something. I mean, I want to believe that the National Security Intelligence must have investigated it overnight and come to a conclusion that certain comments or statements she made in that alleged tape jeopardizes the government, jeopardizes the president's integrity, or put the nation at stake some way, somehow. So I see that all we're doing as journalists and critics and commentators is, is speculating. So... I think that the president has an obligation uh, as a legal authority, as the executive president, to, to, to dismiss anybody he so chooses. But, yeah. of course, it will be very good for all of us Ghanaians to get to have a deeper understanding of the choices that influence uh, the decision to dismiss Ms. Hammer and way forward if there are any investigative reports or analysis that were made on the part of government agencies to be shared with all of us, so we can all make informed decisions about this. I think that the dismissal of Ms. Hammer uh, was rushed and was knee-jerk, if you ask me. I mm. do not say, however, that some of the issues she raised in her tape are, are not of national interest. Of course they are, but I feel that um, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't leave this as just the tape and the issues 
that were raised. There are broader issues that were raised in the state, and I see that as, as media people. Uh, in the days ahead, we may be very interested in individually picking up the issues there and in interrogating them and finding some answers. Okay, answer. all right. Well, well stated, well stated. Now, let me, let me move to Samson. Um, Samson, your, the, the driver was arrested, and then within a short while, actually overnight, he was released again. And you are on record as having stated that his arrest was illegal. What's all that about? Can you tell us? Absolutely. His arrest was absolutely, completely illegal. It was shameful. And the basis is that uh, by, the, by the specific provisions of our national constitution in Article 18, the breach of her privacy, as we have, we have spoken about, is, is, is protected by law that... Um, the Constitution protects every individual against the invasion of his or her privacy, particularly with respect to their correspondences and communication, even though I must add immediately that the Constitution provides exceptions to when some of these things can happen. For example, the Constitution says that where the interference with someone's communication or correspondence is in accordance with, with law and it is necessary in a free and democratic society and for the public safety or for economic well-being of the country or for the protection of health of, or morals or for the prevention of disorder or crime or for the protection of the rights or, or freedoms of others then the, 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 the protection is taken away from the individual in the, in, in the, in, in the protection of their correspondences and communication is sort of taken away. Uh, 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 to summarize, when the public interest outweighs the private interest, then the invasion could be lawful or could be allowed. Now, that is only... The only remedy available to anyone who has suffered such invasion or breach or interference is a civil remedy. It is no crime. The criminal laws of Ghana do not criminalize the act. So on the presumption that that gentleman is indeed the one who recorded the conversation and we understand the police informed us that it is uh, the, the former deputy minister who reported the gentleman to the police and the police hurriedly invited him and that invitation is an arrest and went on to detain him. They had no basis. They cannot point to a single law in a provision in our criminal law that criminalizes that act. If but but but, but Samson, who, who Samson, they, let me let yeah. me let me ask you what 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 about moral law? I mean, we know that mm. there might not be that, but what about you know morally? Is it is it moral to wiretap somebody and release whatever the, uh, their private conversation? This this has been going on. A, this conversation has been going on a while in Ghana. What about moral law? Mm. Yes, I I just pointed out to you. I mean. Constitutionally, there is even a protection. So it's not only about the moral law, but when the police intervenes, it means a crime has been committed. Has a crime been committed? The answer is a big no, because there's no crime committed in that respect. Mm. And, 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 and I have even taken uh, pains to suggest that if anything at all, if it is the case that it is this gentleman who did the taping, and went forward to give it out, what would be the purpose? If the purpose would be that some crime is being about to be committed or has been committed, or that there is a, there, there is a tendency, there's, there's a communication that tends to show that there is some impropriety that, that, that shows a certain miscarriage or a likely miscarriage or a miscarriage of justice being occurring or a breach of the law occurring, then that person will qualify even as a whistleblower by the Whistleblowers Act of 2006 of this country at 720. He rather deserves the protection of the police 
and we are in a country where we are also promulgating uh, um, uh, a witness protection act so that if you look at it from a certain larger principle uh, perspective he rather if it is the case that he taped it and took it out it is a question of uh, someone who may qualify for whistleblower as, as, as a whistleblower protesting Yes. Can I? Can I? We, we, my, my producers are signaling me, but um, let me let now me. Can I clarify on, on, on the last one, Mr. Henry, if you can allow me? Uh, um, me quickly, quickly, just a quick minute. What, what, I'm, in, what I'm saying is, I was talking about the police arrest. What happened? But in, in, I think that uh, will have benefit if there had been a full scale analysis and uh, investigations by the state on this matter. Because she has, as an identity minister, she there's she fit in I should me as a security bitch. The motive for law enforcement. Yes, I, I, I sympathize. Okay. I All right. Yeah, I, I, that, I, I, I get that I point. I, I, I get that point. We can we can go on forever with that. But I understand that. I understand that, Lord. I understand that. I mean. We, we, we understand. Can I, can I ask you quickly, Lord, Samson, please, Lord, gentlemen? Lord, I sympathize with you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, can I, can I, can I control this discussion, please? Can I, can I take charge of this discussion? Um, Samson. Yes. Yes. Can I, can I quickly ask you this, though? The, the police, DSP Freeman Tete of the Ghana Police Service, um, surprisingly said to the the. BBC that they were researching to find out if the, the driver has committed any crime. Do you arrest somebody before you go researching for whether they've, you know, they've committed that's a, a crime? Lazy, that's a lazy job. That's a lazy job. And whoever it is at the mile seven police station who had the complaint and went ahead to invite the gentleman and, and detain him for almost uh, 24 hours ought to be questioned and they ought to be told to their face that what they did was shameful and in fact immediately it was pointed out to them have you heard what they have said that that case may die a natural death it is not that it may die a natural death it will die a natural death not me because there's no crime miss hmm. victoria hammer has every right constitutional right and civil right to go to court and to seek to enforce um, uh, the, her, her, her rights which have been violated, her privacy has been violated. She can go to court and, and, and seek to enforce that. And you see, again, there's, there's this uh, bit about this whole discussion where there is the, the, all over the media, it is said that she said that she will not quit politics until and unless she has made a million dollars. Listen to that conversation again. And I'm saying that that is an interpretation that's been put to it by the media. If you listen, she never really said so, because she said, advising her friend that do not fight your superior if you have not made a million dollars. Would somebody say that may be figurative? But mm. again, on the other side, looking at the interpretation that is put to it, and the question of the su suggestion of judicial interference and corruption of the judiciary, then she should rather be the one who should be answering questions at the police station or by the BN at the BNI or Yoko. Okay. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, um, can I, can I take your, can I take your, your, your yes, final statement? We, we, uh, Hello? Okay, fine. Yeah, Hello, yes. my, my, I'm actually, I've actually gone beyond my time. I'm sorry, but I'll okay. give you each a minute to give your final comments. Can I start with you, Stephen? Well, I mean, all I'm saying is that her dismissal was rushed. And like something rightly said, there are elements of the tape which needs to be thoroughly investigated. So whatever decision government came up to uh, in 24 hours to dismiss her, maybe it's time for us all to know. And then moving on, we need to, as a media, uh, take the issues one by one and analyze exactly the context for which uh, the nation's interest is at stake. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Samson. Well, I think uh, most uh, importantly that also that the decision by the government to the speed with which the government went ahead to dismiss her has sort of confirmed that without any equ equ equivocation, it is her voice on that uh, tape 
and that whatever she said uh, that borders on crime or has something improper. And that is the question that she ought to avail herself uh, for some 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 uh, explanation, she also ought to, uh, I think, uh, uh, begin to consider how she can activate, you know, her, her legal rights in this respect. On a, on a lighter note, are you available for Miss Mr. Quayson if he decides to take on the police and Miss Hammer? Um, well, if you look at it, just uh, just briefly though, because I'm rounding up. <laughs> No, 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 I'm not sure, but I will need to take instructions and, and convince myself okay. that there All ought right. to be a matter that has to be pursued. Okay. But the police's Lord. action is shameful, to All say right. the least. Okay. Lord, final comment. My final comment is this. Concerning police action, that is what my main concern here. The, as a last question is a cousin, when the tape came out, what you see is that other tape. There has been about five months more, this, more taping of her of of sister. Some concerning a very deep part of her, of her parents' life, of which, as, as I mentioned the family yesterday, we wanted to close the matter, that, that should be disclosed, which involved a criminal element that has nothing to do with what, p -p -p public interest. So that one too is there. So, Mr. Inde, I think that a full investigation in the matter. So I afraid you a greater opportunity to come out. I appreciate your concern, our police action. But I think that you are victims of the situation. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. Um, so there you have it, viewers. Stay tuned. There's more to come.